Hello. So we've all got that one friend who's just impossible to buy for. I know I have. So I've recently been contacted by Freud to see if I needed a new blades. Now, I knew I had this friend coming up with a birthday and I wanted to make them a presentation box so I could just buy them a bottle of wine but put it in something handmade. So I said, yeah, I need some new blades because this one is about two years old now. So I'm about due for a change. I want to make a box using finger joints or box joint jigs. So what I've got is a 48 tooth combination blade that I can get this swapped out to. This should leave a nice clean cut on my joints. first thing I need to do is make a simple box joint jig. So I'm going to use the mitre gauge and a scrap of 18mm plywood. I'm just going to get this clamped into place. I'm going to lower the blade down to just slightly under the thickness of the material I'm going to make the box out of. Now what I can do get the battery and the saw and I'm going to push this fence that I've just clamped on through the blade cutting a slit into it. I now need to cut a little peg that's going to go into that slit we just cut. So I've got a bit more ply, this is some 12 mil, and I'm just going to rip a little slither off this. This now fits in there perfectly, but it doesn't need to be this long. So I'm just gonna mark it out and cut it down. Now I can get a little dab of CA glue put into the slot and the peg put into place. Whilst I wait for this to dry, I can cut the wood down to make the box for the wine. Now, I've already prepared some wood. This is some reclaimed wood. Here's some old bed slats. So I had to get all the nails and the straps off it. And then I could get two pieces laminated together and leave those to dry. Then I came back and put them all through the thicknesser to clean them up. So now I can cut the four bits for my box. So I can use the wine bottle as a reference and start cutting some bits down. I've got the four sides for the box cut and the little peg in our jig is dry. So now we can get it on the mitre gauge and I have the rest of the off cut of the little peg. I can get that pushed against the blade and then the short bit of peg pushed against that. Then I can get the clamp on and that's our spacing sorted. Right, it's time to actually cut these joints. So we're going to take one of our bits of workpiece, get it pushed against the blade and lower the blade so it's just poking up slightly above the workpiece. Now we can take this and get it pushed up against our peg. Now what I can do is turn this on and push this through the blade and then 
I can hook the cut I've made over the peg, push it through again, and then keep moving it over the peg and pushing it through. That's the theory anyway. That first side's done, so now I've just got to flip it over and do exactly the same on the other end. I've now cut the joints in both ends of the two longer sides. So what I can do is take this board and flip it around so that the first peg we cut, or the first joint we cut, now goes over the peg. Now I can take one of my shorter sides and butt it up against that board, get it clamped in place, then I'm going to make the first cut, then I can move it along so it goes over the peg and continue as we did before. I have all four bits cut, but before I get them put together, I'm just going to give them all a quick sand down. Having a little test, I can see that this is going to be a tight fit. It's always a fine line because obviously you want it nice and tight, but at the same time, you've got to be able to get it together. But I think we're just about going to be okay. So, next job then, is just to get some glue into these joints and push them together. That was perhaps a little tighter than I wanted it, but it went together without breaking. Uh, so what I can do is adjust the spacing between the pin on my jig and the blade to get the tight, the fit slightly looser. So I've just got a clamp now on the diagonal just to pull the whole thing into square. have a little check to make sure the wine bottle actually fits oh yeah we're all good now I'm just gonna leave this for a few hours to set up this is all dry but the fingers protrude slightly so I'm just gonna sand them flush some of these joints have a small gap in them so what I'm going to do is I've taken some sawdust out of the dust extractor and I'm just going to mix it with a bit of wood glue. This I'm now going to get put in all these little gaps. Whilst I wait for that to dry, I need a top and a bottom for this, and I have some more bits of glued up bed slats. So I can get the saw set up to the width of the box and rip a piece, and then do the same and cross cut a couple of bits so I've got the top and the bottom.
and get a bead of glue around the top and the bottom of this get these boards I've just cut put on and clamped in place The glue's dried, so I can get all the clamps off, and then I'm going to give it another sand down, just to bring this bits that I've glued on flush with the body. It's all nice and sanded, but it's very square at the moment. So what I have is a Freud roundover bit that's going to go in the router. Adding little details like a roundover really just make it look finished and I think a bit more professional. I think this looks so much nicer with rounded off edges. And that router bit from Freud did a beautiful job. Pine can be quite difficult to route sometimes because it's so soft and doing the end grain as well. And this was lovely and sharp and really did a perfect job. Now, you might notice one problem with this box. You can't get into it. So the next job is to get it cut open. Now I was using the 48 tooth Freud blade because it'd leave a lovely clean cut, and it did. The finger joints look very nice indeed. But now I want to rip the box open. So I'm swapping out to a 24 tooth rip blade to do that. I can now get the fence set to where I want to cut this box open and then I'm going to lower the blade so it's just under the thickness of the material. Now what I can do is pass this box through on all four sides to cut it open. Now the box shouldn't actually open up because the blade's not actually going as high as the thickness of the material so the lid should just stay attached and that makes it easier to do and safer. So we've got a cut going all the way around the outside, but the lid's still attached. So what I'm gonna do is take a utility knife, get it in, and cut through that last little slither of wood. That's worked well, but we've got the little slither of wood that just needs tidying up, so I'm gonna sand it back. I've now got a box that actually opens, but there's nothing to keep the lid on. But what I have is some little off cuts of wood that can go into the lid. They're a bit thick at the moment, but as I've still got the Freud rip blade in, I can get them ripped down.
these little bits now I can get cut down into four bits they're going to fit perfectly inside the lid These little bits can now just get glued onto the inside of the lid. I'm going to finish the box with some hard wax oil because it's a finish and stain in one. And get this on and then I'll leave this overnight to dry. The finish is dry on this now but it's left quite a matte finish but I've got some wax polish that so I'm just going to get some of that brushed on and buffed off. looks much better for a little polish up. Now, as this is gonna be a gift, I think it'd be nice to add a little place to put a name on it. And I have these little antiqued bronze name plates. So I'm just gonna get one of those, screwed onto the lid at the top. now get the bottle of wine put in there but I think it's going to need some packaging and what better to use than one of the off cuts of the wood I use to make it so I'm just going to take a few shavings okay let's get this packed again That's it all done. A presentation box made out of some old bed slats using some finger joints to make it. So next time you've got a difficult person to buy for, as long as you put it in a homemade box, I think they're gonna be very happy. So thank you to Freud for supplying all the blades for this project. They did a lovely job. I'm very happy with these finger joints and the cuts in general. So I'll put a link to all of those down below the video so you can check them out. So thank you for watching. Thank you to Freud. Thank you to my patrons and please subscribe for more videos. Mm -hmm.